Welcome back to the series on Elemental Models from Loot Studios. Today I'm taking a look at the mighty Earth Elemental, where I'm going to be exploring the mediums of Army Painter's Speed Paints, Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats, Wave 1 of course, and taking my first look at oil washes. So the model itself has a few elements to it. We've got all the stonework that make up the creature itself. Um, he's obviously wearing some armour around his hands. Um, he's wearing a collar. And of course we have a whole lot of foliage, some vines uh, weaving through the model and some runes and emeralds. So first of all I'm using some speed paints to quickly apply some tonal difference onto the stone. I don't just want a grey with some highlights of one particular colour. I want to get some earthy tones down, a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. Then I'll be looking at Duncan Rhodes acrylic paints, uh, his two thin coats system. And this way I want to apply some highlights and this will just give some slightly more contrasty highlights than the speed paints can obtain. Then I'll look at some oil washes, in which case I'm really hoping it ties all the model together, gives that uniformity of having that one coat over it. So, watch to find out if oil washes are going to elevate my game or not. So due to some technical difficulties, uh, I can't quite show you the process of putting the speed paints on the model. Um, that footage has since disappeared, uh, so we will pick it up from there. But not to worry, I can give you a look at how the model is looking at the moment. So for the speed paints, I'm going to use a couple of the greens for the foliage, the ashen stone and a cultist cloak for some of those dark greys, light greys. And I'm also going to bring in a little bit of flesh tone, a little bit of brown, just to get some differentiation into that stonework so it's not just grey stone. I want a little bit of earth and brown and dirt mixed into it. Now, admittedly the Xenothole was still not light enough to be using the speed paint so it's still quite dark but it came out better than I thought again it really shows you need to wait until your model is dried before you make some decisions on whether you're going to carry on with that color scheme or not um, as I was applying the speed paint I wasn't too happy with how it looked it looked pretty purple um, but since drying um, doesn't look too bad it's got that nice gray of rock with a little bit of red which you get in the rock with iron so at this point I'm going to get on to the acrylics and we'll just look at painting up some of these vines and the armor and the detail uh, we'll see how that contrasts with the look of the stonework and whether I need to do some highlighting and detailing with some grays and whatnot for the stonework um, but I really need that contrast of these other details before I make that decision. And then we'll look at getting some earthy tones and some green tones with the oil washes over the model. And uh, we'll see how it starts to look. So here when we start getting into the vines, this is where we can really see that directional shading coming into play. We want it shaded when it goes around the back of the model. And of course we want to highlight at the front of the model where we want to draw the attention. Um, so this is where we crack out the acrylics. And I'm using Duncan Rhodes Tooth and Coats range here. Um, and we're just going to go around, touch up, try and get some of that highlighting done with the vines, try and get that wrap around feel to it, touch up some of the shading on the foliage. Of course, here we, we just switch it down to a slightly smaller brush, uh, just give us some nice fine detail. Uh, we can get into the little nooks and crannies without spreading too much green where it shouldn't be. The idea here is obviously the washes are going to help. Um, get some of that shading as well onto the foliage once it's done. Uh, we can wipe the oil off the highlights um, and not wipe it off around the back. Uh, this will give us some tonal differentiation between the highlighted front and the back of it even though it's painted in the same colour. The importance of the vines with this model is this is the real contrast in colour is the green uh, to contrast all of the darker earthy tones of the stone. Um, obviously the metallics will shine a little bit but this is our main point of contrast so we really want to make sure we nail some highlights. So with the vines detailed in, it's added that little bit of contrast to the model so you can start seeing some shapes. Uh, from this point on I'm going to look at some different colours. Um, I'll put some of the acrylics into my palette. So I'll look at a couple of greys 
um, see if I can't add a little bit more detail to the rock features. I've also got some metallics on the palette. At this point here, what I'm trying to do with the stonework is quite a few different tones. So the speed paint has helped get some definition, some slight highlights, pooling in the shadows, um, but it's allowed me to get three or four colors wet blended onto the model with the results being quite a tonal difference through the model. So when I put the oil wash over the top, that should hopefully engage and bring everything together throughout the model. And then through the parts where I take the oil wash off, we get some real tonal difference. But at this point, because I'm not too sure what the wash is gonna do, um, I have not used that before. I'm gonna get some highlights, uh, maybe some edge highlights onto the stone. That way we can see whether it's worth doing before the oil wash or we might find that with the oil wash over the top, I need to go back over and do some edge highlighting. So with his collar and his arm wear as such, uh, obviously you could look at using a different tone of stone, um, but to just contrast this and give it a tiny bit of point of difference, I'm gonna use metallics uh, just to contrast the stone. I will use the silver, it won't stand out dramatically visually color wise, um, but it will add that little bit of extra shine and fit in with the metal work of the rest of it. To highlight it all, to give us a break between the silver and any of the gray, uh, I wanna go with a nice gold. Um, and then we'll look at reds. Uh, I've got a metallic red I'm gonna use for the emerald. With the runes, I may see if I can use some acrylic inks. Don't know if it's fit for purpose, but this is the idea ex of experimenting, seeing if it works or not. So we also have a clear coat over the top. Um, we're going to apply the oil, washes over the top. So we're going to go with some earthy colours. So yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And I'm also going to do up a green wash for the trees. So as far as putting the oil washes on, uh, I'm trying a few different colours here. I'll admit they mix to a slightly different colour than I had in my head, just looking at the uh, tubes themselves, um, but this is why we experiment. So obviously I'm putting the wash on quite thick to begin with, uh, and then I am using the brush to just wick away some of these parts uh, where it's bubbling and just gone on a little bit too thick. And of course once this is dried, then we come back and we basically remove it from all the highlights and all the parts we want it to stand out and that will leave the oil shading, uh, obviously, where we haven't wiped it off. So oil's inherently a little bit messier than acrylics. Uh, you can see that with the way it goes over the model. Definitely messes the palette up. And of course, we want to use a non-porous uh, palette here. So I'm using plastic uh, for these. You can use tiles, uh, ceramic tiles, uh, but not a wet palette. Um, and same goes with metallics. I tend not to use a wet palette. And then the process of wiping these off, uh, it is a matter of having the right tools. I'm using some of the uh, sponges I have from around the house and some cotton buds, which is not the best. It can leave fibers on the model, uh, but, and of course this is quite a jagged model. Uh, so I have a feeling there will be a few fibers from the um, Q-tips. And for one of the last steps for these runes, I'm painting a white underneath, just using a white oil to dab it into the recesses of the runes. And basically I'm using some unmixed acrylic inks, red, and just wicking that into the runes, uh, letting it run off the brush, fill the gaps. And we will let all of this dry and then come back and have a final look at the model, see how it all came together. So there you have it, Lutz Earth Elemental, number three of a series of four. Completed, we've had an experiment with oil washes. I've tried that for the very first time. So 
now it is definitely not as daunting as it was one or two videos ago. The runes came up all right, there's not much of a glowing effect to them. I think next time I'd work a little bit more on trying to get the glow effect spreading across the model a little bit more, uh, but it has contrasted, they do stand out from the grey. The oil washes work pretty well as a highlight on top of the stonework, quite glad at how that came out, it sort of highlighted quite well. It has given me some good earthy brown tones down in the dirty muddier parts of the stone model. And the acrylics have worked well, they've done their trick. Uh, tooth and coats, they're an awesome range. So there we have it, number three of four in the series. I've looked at the fire elemental, we've looked at the water elemental, and I've taken a look at the earth elemental today. So first is the fire elemental. This is where I use some army painter normal acrylics through the airbrush, some touch up with the brushes, and then we've used some inks to just give it a little bit of vibrancy. Here I have the water elemental. This was my first try with oil paints raw, basically. Um, and today we looked at the earth elemental with oil washes. So all that remains is the air elemental, in which case we'll be looking at some inks and airbrush. So with just one more model remaining, which is the air elemental, uh, which I will be addressing in my next video. So if you want to catch that video, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to take a look at inks, try and get some nice vibrancy into this model. Um, if you happen to like this video, leave a like, and I will catch you on the next one.